Let's go for it. One last strike. Shall we do that? Yes, I think we shall. Hello there, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Anacologist Plays, the channel where we get to talk about nature while playing games. And we are back here in Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, and sadly, this may likely be the last episode we have of it, for now, at least. And we are going to start off with one of my favorite animals here in the Upper Plains, and it is the Soundlast Colossus, and there should be two right up here. And oh my word, look at those beautiful, beautiful creatures. Now that one in the front there, the more turquoise colored one, that is of course a juvenile, that is a young one. And the one that is right at the back here, the more vividly colored one, this is in fact an adult. And I think this is actually a mature individual. Indeed, it is a breeding individual. Okay. So of course you have got the change in coloration as you go from juvenile to adult. The juveniles are designed more to blend in with their background, whereas the adults there are designed to stand out. They're trying to attract a partner. They are trying to reproduce. And in nature, that is one of the main goals, if not the main goal, in, of all animals and plants, to basically just reproduce. They want their genes passed on. The Soundlast Colossus here is one of the largest creatures we have in the Upper Plains. Of course, you've got the Zakru, which is much larger. But I think that means that they are the second largest in the upper plains. I don't think there's anything else that's bigger than them. So when they're adults, they don't really have anything to fear. Very few things will be able to take them down. Maybe a Thanator. So in the game here, maybe a Feral Thanator will be able to take them down. But very, very little else. And they have got a special trick up their sleeve if they do feel threatened. Now these little guys, they're just kind of running away from me. But if you look at the top there of the sails, you'll see the little grooves running in there and you can see a whole bunch of channels actually leading in there because when they are feeling threatened they will tilt their body in such a way that wind will blow across their sails or bump into their sails and actually be forced into those little channels over there you can see the little entrance holes wind will be forced in there and that will then enter special chambers in their body and they can then kind of inflate this section at the top there and then blast air out along these special grooves, the special end exit holes along this side of their body. And in the process then they create this blast of air. And of course they do make this whoop sound while they're doing that. And that's of course where they get their name, Sound Blast Colossus. Really, really one of my favorite animals. Now what we are going to do is we're just going to show you, in the name of science, I am just going to show you the defense used by the Sound Blast Colossus because I'm just going to pluck out my weapon and then they're going to be very very upset and they are going to use there we go come on there we go I'm not going to shoot you however you're going to there we go sucking in the air there and blasting it out from the side of their body so in the upper plains there usually is wind blowing which means that there will usually be enough wind to actually ch channel into their little uh, grooves there. Come on. Takes a while to reset it seems. Uh, okay, okay, they do also have a nice horn on their head that they can use. Come on. Do the sound blast again. That one there scraping the... A juvenile there was scraping the ground with its... Fin on its head trying to intimidate me, trying to get me to go away. Very similar to the Hammerhead Titanus here we saw. And there we go, there's another Grooves and, and a Blast. Groovy, baby. Groovy. All right, so that's the Sound Blast Colossus. Their main strategy is to try and get you away from them by blasting you with air. And the, of course, they are big, they are aggressive. They will take you out with their horns on the top of their head as well if they deem if they deem that necessary. Now we are a combat strength of 20, so we are nice and strong. We're able to take most attacks with you know, <laughs> no problem. So we are just going to now run away. So we don't really have anything to fear, but we are going to just go and carry on with our stuff we need to do. Now last time we tried to find a way into this massive facility, Drill Base Omega, which is most likely where Mercer is. However, we were discovered and there were some problems there, but we did get a drive from Taylan. And we are just going to pop over to the Resistance Headquarters now to try and find out what that disk contained. 
Alright, it seems that Rinella is right over there. And as it says here, if you progress in the quest beyond this point, you will not be able to leave the quest area until it is completed. Right, so I guess let's go for it. One last strike. Shall we do that? Yes, I think we shall. Hello, everybody. What about the data drive from Thailand? Was there anything we can use? The RDA dug deep. They breached the caves below. Here, away inside. If the cave entrance is real, perhaps the clans will not need to leave. If I make it into hmm. the base, I'll need their support. You will have it. Three oh, clans, yes. one army. I never thought I would see that again. Four clans. Mm-hmm. We saw it here as well. And my own. We are five clans. <laughs> Fighting is one. And just to the north of Drill Base Omega, there is apparently a cave entrance. So it seems that these mountains here have a lot of limestone or something similar in them where the rock is weathered very easily especially as rainwater percolates through the rocks and it'll be interesting to see whether this is in fact limestone i'm used to limestone caves there's definitely a lot more ikran activity over here everybody's ready to go fight and there we go temek you're ready for us we have word from the rest of the kamatire anufi sent a scout ahead to the base mm -hmm. Fight. Oh yes. Knows what's at stake. I hope you're right. Of course, the Aranehe is in greatest danger. They where they are closest to the Troll Base Omega. Although then again, it is also in blast range of a lot of the Kamitire uh, little settlements over here as well. So whatever is happening over there is probably going to destroy a massive area here. The Zespa will, I think, be least affected of all the clans, and the Aranehe will most likely be affected worst of all. And what will most likely happen is if they are, in fact, going to cause a massive explosion that results in oil bubbling up from the surface, it is going to most likely flood this entire King Lord Forest section. So that is going to be massive, massive destruction, and we don't want that, obviously. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the Zeswar is in. A storm of Zeswa on our side. Harding won't be happy to see them again. They're right to murder space on Diahos. But the perimeter turrets will be a problem. Once I'm inside, I should be able to shut them down. There is an overlook in the sky above his base. Let's meet there when when we're done. Okay. When we're done, yes. When we are done, we will meet there, Rinella. There is the last blemish on the land. And somewhere to this side, there should be a cave entrance. Yep, there is a massive tree that has fallen over. And underneath it, a cave entrance, it seems. Okay. So this is most likely a limestone cave. And it was weathered away with by water that you know, percolated through the uh, ground here. And rainwater is slightly acidic. And limestone is rich in calcium carbonate, which dissolves very easily in acidic water with rainwater percolating through the soil it has weathered this cavern and in the process also made a lot of stalactites at the top here and there should be some stalagmites on these uh, on the rocks as well don't see any yet but stalactites hanging tightly from the ceiling and stalagmites might reach the ceiling from the ground level over here and over time as calcium carbonate rich water percolates through the soil and you know drops from the cavern here it will run along this little section here and deposit a small amount of calcium carbonate at the tip here as the water then drops down. Some of the calcium carbonate may still be in the water as it drips down and then it will start forming the stalagmite. And this will take a few thousand years to get to the stage where it is at here. But this you will very often find with limestone caves, those stalagmites and stalactites. And then also the fact that it gets weathered by rainwater like this. So... I'm used to limestone caves, this is what we have in South Africa quite a bit as well. Uh, a lot of the areas where uh, you have got massive cave systems and we've got lots of stalactites and stalactites are in fact in limestone rich areas or areas with similar type of rocks that weather very very easily. Ah, there's a nice little water aquatic section here. A lot of bioluminescence still in the cave here because, well, where we are, 
there's no light shining in here. All the creatures here have to create their own light. And most likely they are doing this with the use of some kind of chemical reaction. And they're most likely using some chemicals they are getting... Ooh, hello. They are getting from the soil or from the rocks. That is most likely what they are using. They're breaking that apart and in the process they're getting the elements they need in order to get like luciferin or some kind of similar compounds that they can then use to make light. Well, we are underground. I don't think there's a lot you can do in order to communicate with someone when they're underground like this. Of course, very easy to get lost in caves like this if you don't know where you're going. Oh. There we go. Now, if you get out of this, you're not going to get out of this because look who's here. It is the blue death. There we go. Okay, is there anybody here? No. This looks like a trap. This smells like a trap. This feels like a trap. Is it the trap? It most likely is a trap. It's a trap! Yeah, it's a trap. You know what? Preemptively gonna put that down there. And this over here. Yes, they're running around quite a lot. Okay, I think I got some there. <laughs> there we go, another one. Oh, that was a massive explosion. That was a smaller explosion. <laughs> Come on. Go boom. Let's just see, we've got a few more left. Sheesh, those are a big, few big guys. Okay. Oh, they're dead. Oh, they're dead. What? What's happened to you? Yeah. Hey! You shocked those amp suits? I'm sorry. Are you okay? Oh. I was supposed to be clear. I didn't get you, did I? No, you didn't. I was afraid you wouldn't come. But you did. You believed in me. I saw the shard. It's being tapped on the upper level. You could get there. I'll show you how. Let's crack on, shall we? I'm not going down here without back. A whole squad of amp suits just my shark. Mm-hmm. That's just the radios, man. The power uh -huh. adapter keeps shorting stuff out. So, it's either one, the yes. radios are down, or two, something took them out. Uh -huh. Either way, they don't need help from us. <laughs> you want to tell Harding that? Uh. Come on, man. Nah, seriously, your radio's right there. Why don't you call her? <laughs> you probably don't feel like doing your job today. I'm sure she'll understand. Might even give you a new posting. Something up in the plains, maybe? <laughs> Have you chasing panthers all day? Oh my word. Alright, alright. Gee. Sorry I said it. Just give it a few minutes, hmm. okay? See if they radio back. Fine. Have your frickin' minutes. <laughs> so of course the one guy there getting worried about the fact that the amp suits downstairs suddenly just stopped responding and the other one going, No, please, don't don't make waves. So, um Yeah, about that. Should have listened to your friend. <laughs> well, yeah, typical horror movie trope where like the radio stop respond stops responding, and then you're like, uh, it's probably fine, and then something bad happens. I will not allow the sky people to best us. Not again. They will regret the day they cross the Kamatiri. I'm sure the Kamatiri are eager, eager, eager for vengeance. Oh my word, okay, and here we are standing, just watching, okay, well, that went well, I don't see any losses on the Kamitiri side. I do, however, see a whole bunch of RDA coming for us. Well, maybe we can actually just run straight past everyone. Okay, okay yes. Thank you, Taylan. Harding's going to pull back. Hmm. We could win this thing. 
Of course, if Harding does pull back, she will most likely be uh, popping up in the DLC. Plenty of vamp suits. Taking them out would mean less firepower against the Zeswa. But be careful. Mm -hmm. Don't want anyone to know you're this close to the turret control room. All right, it is sniping time. Okay, where are you running to? To your doom, that's where you're running. <laughs> Hello. Goodbye. Oh, oh, I see dire horse riders approaching the main gate. Oh, so nice. Anyone, can you get them inside? Not from here, but you're pretty near the bridge control room. Something's gonna happen. There's a rocket launcher right over there. You know what? We haven't used a rocket launcher in ages. Let's go boom, shall we? Oh, there are some guys there. Well, there are going to have been some guys there. Right now. <laughs> uh, the best kill is overkill. And I believe here come the Zeswa. The turrets are down. The gates are open. Yes. Yes. There's only a few Zeswa though. Surely we should have a few hundred coming in, yeah? Oh no, more RDA. They know you're in the control tower. Okay. So that happened. Okay, not going to go for overkill now. We're just going to take them out the old, good old fashioned short bow. Nice and silent strikes. A few moments later. I need those big amp suits to come closer. Come on. So I can make you go boom. Come on. Yes. There we go. Thank you. And goodbye. <laughs> uh, I will never get tired of explosions in this game. There we go, finally! Nope. Bye, Harding. And there we go, there is Johnny Boy. And... Dropkick! Hello. Yeah, didn't see me, did you? No, you did not. Don't bother trying to shoot the glass. Oh, Mercer. Second thought, go ahead. Yes. Waste your ammo. I will. When the drill charge fires, fires, this is the region will be called the Frigid oil, oil Field on hmm. Pandora. Think of what Okay, so it is about changing the whole area over here into an oil field. That's not nice. Okay, something tells me we need to shoot it right as they are actually putting the fuel into that fueling port. There we go, almost, and there we go. Okay, that's the one. Okay, 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 got it. Oh, hello, guys. No, 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 listen. This is a party for one, not a party for everyone. Oh, fire, 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 fire. Okay, we're on fire. Ever so slightly on fire. Listen, yeah. Stop shooting me with your little stingy stingies. Okay, and there we go. All your hard work has been nothing That's what you say. Ah, something tells me something big is going to come through the doors. No, never mind. It's right over there. It's behind me, yeah, there we go. Hello there. Say good night. Oof. Explosions. Okay, I like explosions, but I like when I'm causing the explosions. <gasps> oh yes. Oh no. No, no, no. I don't want to go up there. I wanna grab this. There we go. 
Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> this is how you do it. Mm-hmm. No, Taylan. Yeah, we're not going without you. Aha! Here we are. Oh no. Okay. Mercer, you bugger. Ah, there we go. Thank you, Taylan. We are not children. We ought not be. Mercer. Thank you. We'll take our mother's song cord back. And in a minute, you'll just be ash on her wings. Delan. Delan, let's go. Yes, be free of Mercer. There we go. Timek. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yes, I did. Okay. Oh, yo! That is a massive explosion. Nelda, I I know you must hate me. Hate is not our way. It's finally over. The RDA is still out there. But we are free. He's yes, gone. we are. Mercer will never hurt anyone again. And we can move on now. As a new family, right? No, sorry, Alma. No, just no. We're not a family. We you followed your path long enough. Yeah, you're RDA. We are not. It's time we follow our own. We must rebuild what we've lost and find a way to be Saren to again. Mm-hmm. Even me. The scars of the past will not shape our future. Mm-hmm. But allies will always be welcome. What a nice end. And the music in the game, as always, just exceptional. The Siren 2 theme woven into all the rest of the music there. Whatever comes next, we will be ready. Yes. The Saren two are no longer lost to silence. We will share our stories again across Pandora. Our future. Mm hmm Ours to make. Together. What a marvelous way to end the story here. But we're not done yet. And now finally we are heading into a whole new world. A world where everything is back to the way it's supposed to be. Although the scar over there is still around, we are going to finally have this base no longer present. So finally this area can rehabilitate itself. So we'll have some autogenic recovery, some recovery driven by the vegetation itself. And yo, over time that scar will also heal. I don't see any other RDA facilities, which means we should now be at a hundred percent clean air. Well, soon enough, which is absolutely marvelous. Now, before we end though, there is one more animal that I do want to have a quick look at, and that is the Bone Helm Rhino. And there we have a herd of three up ahead. Actually, a herd of four. There appear to be two adults and two young ones there. So there's a young one in the center there. Another young... Oh, there's an adult here. Okay, so there's a young one, there's an adult. And then there appear to be another adult and a mature individual over here. So of the... Oh, there are five. Oh, wow. Is that also a young one? Yeah, that's also a young one. So two young ones. One or two mature or adult ones. And then one mature one. And they're just going to run past. I'm not sure what they're running from. I think it could have been the lightning strike that they are unhappy about. Okay, you guys just hiding under the giant mushroom here, are we? Oh, why are you attacking me? I don't have weapons out. I wasn't even running. Okay. 
Oh, they are attacking me now, so I'm just going to get out of sight, out of mind. All right, so they uh, are leaving me alone, so let's see. Hello. They're just going back to where they were feeding. So we'll meet up with them in a moment. So we have got one mature individual, most likely a mature bull, and then two uh, adults, which are most likely his two females and then two offspring. So it seems li that like rhinos, they will have one calf per season. So there's this bull. He is going to be the breeding bull. Hello. Beautiful, beautiful creature. You can see the vivid colorations on him. Obviously, he is trying to attract a partner. And then he has succeeded because he has actually attracted two females. And both of them have successfully raised a calf. So very, very heavily armored creature. I mean, you can see here, even this young one over here, it, is, it has a lot of armor plating all over its body. It is almost, almost invulnerable. Of course, it does have its weak spots right over there, which is glowing at the moment. And a, a Thanator would be able to grab it. And if the Thanator can just get to the throat there, it will be able to take out this Bone Helm Rhino. And it would actually be able to take out even a mature one like this bull over here. I mean, you can see it also still has that weak spot right over there. But the armor on the head here and the back will be protecting it against most threats. So it seems they form these little small family groups with up to three or four females accompanying this adult bull here. The females, or the adults here, and I can't run because, you know, they're going to chase me again. Now you can see here the adults here, the females, don't have the bright colors that this male will have. And they are running away from the thunder. Okay, they are scared of the lightning. That seems to be the case. Oh, and apparently they're upset with me again. So I can't even go into the hunter's guide without them attacking me. Okay, so I guess that's it for today. <laughs> um, right, sorry guys. I did not mean to disturb you. I haven't been running. I haven't drawn my weapons. I've just been talking about you. But really, really awesome creatures. Living in a family also means that they are even safer from predators. They most likely could form little circles to protect the calves. The young ones, the babies, will most likely be kept in a little... Uh, in the center of the cluster there so that they can form this impenetrable line of defense against any predators coming in the area. Ah, oh, marvelous creatures. But that is then where we are going to call it a day, everybody. So thank you very much for joining me on our little adventure as we have now officially cleared Pandora. Now, of course, Nick and I will be back on Sunday for another Avatar Frontiers of Pandora live stream where we are also wrapping up the story. I have cut out a lot of the cutscenes in today's episode. We will not be cutting it out in the live stream. So join us if you want to see all those wonderful little cutscenes as well. And until next time, everybody, stay safe. I'll see you all soon. Bye.